Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show. It's just about six minutes before seven o'clock and this morning we'll be chatting with a motivational speaker slash relationship counsellor because recently on the invitation of Lands Road Church of Christ, the boys polishing camp and the girls refining camp, they visited Pigeon Island in St. Lucia where they participated in a host of activities. So good morning to you, Mr. Stewart. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. All right, now before we go any further, tell me a little bit about the, the boys' polishing camp and the girls' refining camp. Well, we, had, uh, we have an initiative that we started here in Trinidad and Tobago, particularly in Tobago, called Boys' Polishing Camp. Um, I thought of the initiative given uh, the challenges that we are having with boys, so it was geared towards bringing them up to be gentlemen teaching them how to do the things that we felt that as a young boy you should understand how to do, how to dress appropriately for different functions, how to be able to speak, how to control your emotions, your anger, etc. Um, how to eat with knife and fork, because we found that a number of them have not eaten with knife and fork. They have accustomed putting their hand in a box of chicken and take it out and eat, etc. So, so we came up with this initiative and it has been running here for quite a while. Um, we run it for at least five years here in um, Tobago and we got some very good results out of it. What is the age group of, of, of young people that you're targeting? Well, the one that we targeted this year were teenagers. Okay. That is from 13 years old to 19 years old. But in the one that we've had in Tobago here over the years, we've had them into segments. So we've had them under 10, and then we've had them to teenagers, etc. Because you would have more resources at at your um, disposal. Right. And what was the response like? Have you seen dramatic changes in some of these young men, and, and, and in the way they carry about themselves, the way they approach situations? Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, we've had, we're particularly in the control of the, the anger, control of uh, the emotions, that we've seen some very good results, um, where it is not, no longer reflex, but it is thought-provoking. You, you, you consciously go towards a situation. We've also had a progress in that one of our graduates who have been about the, through the system, he became, when we were having the mock parliament in Trinidad and Tobago, he was the mock prime minister at one year. And then he has also gone off and been in leadership conferences for youth um, outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So he has, and he credits, whenever he's interviewed, I've heard him credit the boys polishing camp for bringing out that confidence in him to be able to speak and to take up leadership skills. Nice. Mr. Stewart, hi, Kimberly here. I was just wondering how the hi. partnership with uh, St. Lucia came about. How did the guys, or well, the boys, in fact, make that trip to St. Lucia? Good. Well, you see, this wasn't Tobago boys in St. Lucia. No. This is St. Lucia saw it and ah. asked for us to bring the program to them. So they supplied the, the young people, etc. They supplied the resources, and I went across there and, and also conducted the program in St. Lucia. Nice. And what sort of activities was done across in St. Lucia? Was it similar to what the boys experienced in Tobago as well? And, and more actually, in Tobago, we never did the girls' refining camp, even though we have been requested to do that. But we have competent people in Tobago handling the girls and doing re refinement of girls, etc. So I didn't feel it was necessary to duplicate the excellent work that those groups were doing here. Uh, but in St. Lucia, because it is a novel in St. Lucia, we merged it with the girls' refining camp. So we had the girls going into a professional uh, makeup artist to help them to do their facials, etc., cleaning of the skin. We had the sitting posture demonstrated and shown how they should sit as ladies, etc., that would be able to um, cause them to sit without revealing themselves. Um, refining them in that area. We also had uh, the boys learning how to tie their ties. We also had them doing certain things that they have not done. We were surprised that we had a teenage group from 13 to 19, and they have never pitched marbles before. <laughs> so there are so many things that they have never done. They have never made a kite. We have them making kites, etc. So, so it was really um, an enjoyable time. What we also did is that we weaned them off of their devices for 
many parts of the camp where you are not allowed to be on the uh, device. At first, it was a bit of um, a challenge for them, but I think that they eventually fell in where they knew that there was a time to use that and a time not to. We also had where instead of the camp, we are providing the meals and making the meals. They themselves made the meals with the supervision of adults. And this is healthy meals. And we taught them how to eat with knife and fork. We brought in somebody who was able to also teach them the etiquette of how you socialize with each other and so on. And the various cutlery that are used and what they are used for. And Mr. Stewart, I'm just wondering about the follow through in St. Lucia. I mean, you are no longer in St. Lucia, you're back in Tobago. And then how do you expect the students to continue to practice what they would have learned? Well, what they did, I started seeing a set of friend requests coming up and I realized that those were students who just graduated. Now, it is unusual for children. The children usually try to hide themselves on the internet. They don't want to be friends of them to see what they're doing. So I was really happy not only to see that they friended me and requested friends. They also started a chat group and added me without me knowing. I just saw the chat group go up and I realized, hey, these are the students who were in the group. They've also um, started looking. They had themselves had, after we graduated on the 13th, they went to one of the parents of the graduates and asked whether they can't have now a two three days after the camp where they still continue what they were doing and they they did that from the saturday sunday monday tuesday so they had that three days and then they would take a break yesterday they are starting that back again tonight actually and run it for another straight into the weekend so that's the energy that they have they, they they don't want to separate and they want to continue what they're doing the the leaders of the Lansworth Church of Christ have already decided and made it that they are going to have another one next year. Nice. The objective is to follow these students over a five year period at least and see because by then some of them would have been over 19, some of them would, would have been closer to um, the late teenage and the new ones would have been coming in but now you can be able to track them and see how their personality their lifestyle their relationships are now developing and so it is really a long-term program we are hoping to have nice i want to congratulate you on this mr stewart because i think that is definitely a, a fantastic initiative i'm a little bit curious though as to what are how do you decide what the curriculum is so for example i heard you you mentioned specific things for boys like tying tying their ties and that kind of thing uh and for the girls you mentioned things like skincare how, how come skincare isn't important to the gentlemen as well <laughs> well we did hygiene for the boys right so um the, your grooming your your um your scent your your bathing and there were certain cleanliness that the girls would deal with that they would deal with their the the women that we would have been handling them and then the boys as so far as how they do their own cleanliness in their personal their, their genitals etc so the, some of them went across the board but it was not necessarily something that the boys are, are really on on the on doing the because you're talking about makeup this the artist that came in was more dealing with makeup okay um and putting okay. on of some of these things but the hygiene would have been uh, adequate for the boys i hear you and if people in tobago are interested in becoming a part of this or getting their children involved in this how can they contact you oh they can just call me at 868 um 480 0080 or they could go to my website which is www.michaelatstuart.com. Michaelatstuart.com. And is there usually a cost for the service, and how much? How much is it average? Well, because of, we don't encourage the children to bring their own meals because they have not been able to bring the kind of meals that we would like them to do. It does cost, and it costs over a period of one week. And so we have had over the time the Tobago of Assembly had done in the past supporting it through the then secretary Dr. Um, mr joel jack who was the secretary for finance at the time and he has been able to uh, assist us to be able to make this happen but it will be because of assembly as in so many other cases where the downturn of the economy where you don't have the kind of resources and finance to continue things 
all the time they uh, it was stopped by that and so that limited us as to what we can do mm -hmm. so it, it does cost and it, it depends on how long it's going to run in the case of land road they provided all the resources so it was able to be run without having a cost attached to the students so and the, the ones that needed yeah. the most actually the ones that needed the most their parents are unable to be able to afford it so we need corporate citizens to come on board persons to be able to donate things persons are also to sponsor things etc and once that happens then we can make the rest take place thank you so much for joining us this morning mr stewart and congratulations thank you so kindly Take care. That's Mr. Michael Stewart, our motivational speaker and relationship counselor, just shedding some light for us on, what, on some of the work that he's been doing recently, invited across to St. Lucia to be able to take part in, in you know, helping to, to bring our young people to a better place, to a more elevated place in society, as they say. We take a quick break and come back with more inside the Now Morning Show. Stick around.